Hey YouTube, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I have the second part of our chess opening blueprint on the F3 Banco. I want to show you another critical line, and today we are going to go over the game Hikaru Nakamura versus Maxime Vashir Lagrave. This game was played in uh, 2008, and this is a really model stellar game. I love this game. This is a super sharp opening, the E6 variation really is uh, <laughs> the sharpest possible play that you can get out of this. And this game is fantastic. And it's again, it's very similar to the first critical line, which we looked at last time, which was A takes B5, because it's again uh, sharp where every tempo matters and the initiative really matters even all the way into the end game. So we're gonna see a really sharp, vicious attack here. Nakamura played E4, of course this is the point. And of course the point is to take on D5. I briefly want to mention that there's an interesting move that doesn't get played very often, um, but maybe should be considered a little bit more seriously. It Peter does not like it <laughs> at first, but it seems pretty legit if you give it some time. If they take back here, one idea is to now take, and after the recapture, you can play bishop to c5. And the whole point of this line is you give the pawn to not let white castle, and you almost never will in this line. So this knight is going to go to e2, and then you're just not going to be able to castle. You know, it might also go to h3, where it has ideas of uh, going to f4 and h5 eventually. But it does make it slightly difficult to castle. That being said, you're probably fine even if you don't get castled in this line. You can just develop all of your stuff and take it from here. But, it's yeah, it's very interesting. Objectively, you are just down a pawn, but the fact that castling might be hard or you might have to do it semi-artificially means that in a practical circumstance it may become difficult to play this as white but I think it's not played because objectively it's just you shouldn't be down upon but anyway that's an interesting variation that doesn't get played all that often but it's worth knowing that you're at least doing okay so they take and I think well, most of us will be like all right I guess we just take back routinely on d5 no that's not the point and Julian knows this game Holy cow, we're going to rely on him for all the answers, all of them, without looking it up a second time. So, <laughs> it's probably a reason he knows it. It's because it's an amazing game. After e5, we see very similar to some other openings when the knight gets attacked. You put the queen on e7, and that forces white to play queen to e2. And now the threat to the knight is real. So, you have to go back. Really, the only way, the only safe square is going back to g8. And let's take a look around. What's happening? Well, time to bring out the knight. You know, you're kind of hoping for a move like this. Seems very possible. But now white has a devastator. White has a devastator. Knight to d5. The idea, one idea, your favorite idea is here with a family fork. And if here, hopefully we can all see b6. And the knight comes in. This is horrible. Um... So that's what you're hoping for. It's very likely that at a certain level, people might chuck that in. But anyways, bishop to b7 is the appropriate way of defending it. And at some point, we're going to play f4, but not the main point. The main point is knight to h3 and knight to f4 with pressure on this pawn. We're still we're trying to force black to make decisions here in the center. So he, we want him to have to push either his c or d pawn so we can get access to certain squares. So knight h3. That's So there's part of the blueprint. Now, uh, c4 might strike you as a big surprise, but black does have to deal with the fact that knight f4 is being played, so he prepares queen to c5. Now, knight f4, queen c5, defending the pawn, and now the amazing point of this opening is that we have a brilliant tactic here. So this is kind of the first critical point. This is the really cool position where things become very critical and you have to be uh, concrete and play this right. And everything is forced here, so really one slip by either side. So hopefully it's in this case, if we're playing this as white, it's black. So it's just a little bit of knowledge here will be super useful and you could easily take somebody by surprise here. The move is knight f takes d5. What? 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 Your knight? Your knight! What? They take it! He took it! There goes the knight! Naka! Blunder the knight! No. It's all well calculated. Bishop to e3. 
You try to kick the queen. Queen's got to move, and then we're going to capture the bishop. So black says, all right, I got one more trick. I attack your B pawn. Kind of, <laughs> you know, now if you pin your knight, so you can't hop and jump and take my guy. So A3, come on, we got to break the pin. I got to take your bishop. Queen A5, this is all very forced. And then bishop to D2. This is the all-star move. Breaking the pin and making some threats. So now the bishop has to move and you have to go to e6 so now you know what happened why are we down a piece here what's going on well the main move here knight d5 only real try and again you might be like what is going on this is still easy you attack my queen i know just what to do you move the queen away you stay here all the threats are gone aren't they what is happening queen takes c4 and yeah once again this is becoming a threat. So he's going to defend rook a7. Still just keeping up with theory here. Let's try again. Rook c1. What's our threat? Knight to c7. So, all right. They take the pawn and knight to c7. So black will have to give back a little bit of material here after knight to c6. This is the amazing part too. All of this happened, all forced. And then after this trade, we capture here and let's take a look around uh, two pawns plus four pawns is six so we are up two pawns and some exchanges here rooks in exchange for two pieces and there's pawns very complicated but very easy to blunder here very easy so easy the mvl did it big blunder alert black played the most obvious move knight takes e5 like, what could be more natural than that? This is actually a blunder. And even though the queens are off, there's a huge initiative here for white. So at this point, uh, go ahead and pause every time if you think you want to take a little time to find the move. The best move for white. Again, we're looking for these forcing moves. Bishop to a5, check. King only has two squares. Don't really want to go to e8, because then this is another free move. So you have to block the connection of your bishop and okay but still how is this enough um some people have spotted some moves in the chat rook to c8 just getting that rook back there king's gonna move probably to f2 the other rook's gonna come in you still have an initiative so probably black saw this and, and thought he was doing just fine well this is not fine this is actually totally busted all right trying to create some squares for the pieces check and Another tactic. Every move, very forcing. So he decides to win a little bit of material here with the move. Rook takes f8. Very nice combo. And now takes, I think he also could have played knight takes f3, but it's, either way, you're losing a piece here. So, or, you know, two pieces for a rook. And now you just castle. And it's sort of emerged that we got these two monster pawns over here, just crushing it. And it's just technique for this guy now. And he has it. Naka's got the technique here. So after a lot of nice, excellent, world-class moves. Uh, just nothing MVL could do. Look at that pawn go. It's just all over. Boom, says the chat. So, yeah, again, this E6 line, it's very interesting. It's very sharp. you got to know about this knight sack on D5. But... If you take a little bit of time and you study this and you got the blueprint now, you can go out there, you can take people on and just know that you always have the initiative. You're looking for these forceful moves. And even with queens off the board, Naka just kept coming and coming and coming and it was just too much for MVL in this one. So I hope you guys did like that game. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for the third part of our blueprint.